Without further ado, Short Box Nation, let's welcome for the first time ever, Daniel Warren Johnson to the show. And the last time. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put, do not put that bad mojo on us. Daniel, what's up? Welcome, welcome to the show. Buddy. Welcome. Yo, I, uh, man, it's been a while since people have been talking about my ponytail. I love it. <laughs> I love that out of everything we said, he's like, yeah, they got a point about the ponytail. Look, look, we, we excel at being originals. Not oh. good, but originals, you know. Damn. Well, let me tell you, I'm sure I told this story before sometimes, so apologize. apologies if you've heard it before. You haven't heard it on the short box. I may have. I may have been asked by a public school, a public high school, to come in and talk to the students about what I do and, hmm. you know, what my job is, okay. the possibilities of being an artist in today's day and age. And I'm over here, like, throwing up, like, the commissions I've worked on, like Darth Vader. I've worked on Marvel Comics, DC Comics, and I'm like, these kids must be so impressed. And, you know, we get to the question time, and I'm ready. I'm ready. And, you know, the teacher, it's like a... It's like 200 kids. It's like the whole high school is like checking out this presentation and the vice principal or whatever is like, does anybody have any questions for Mr. Johnson? And it's like dead, nothing. Everyone's just like, <laughs> you know, kids just say they are not impressed at all. Oh, boy. And uh, there was one girl. She raises her hand. She goes, yes, Mr. Johnson. I was like, yeah. Do you know that ponytails are not cool anymore? <laughs> no! <laughs> savage! In front of like 200 people. Oh, man. Oh, it's savage. You know what? Though. And I was like, I appreciate you looking out for me. And she's like, I just wanted to let you know. That and is I was like, funny. Ah, oh, it's cute. <laughs> so, That's cute. So when are you going to draw said school in your next comic book getting absolutely demolished and destroyed? All right, that'd be I my revenge. On it. That'd be my revenge. He's like, guys, I'm not that time. petty. And he's like, instantly must draw <laughs> school getting He's destroyed. like, what was that little girl's name? You know, again? No, no, no. <laughs> she oh, was man. cool. She wasn't like mean about it. Yeah, she, she was, was like, I can like, honestly tell. You know, you get a vibe. Mm -hmm. You get a vibe. And yeah. she was like, looking out. So like, look, fam. Look it out. Let's just, let's, let's, yeah. let's do a little solid here, okay? <laughs> I mean, look, you can absolutely give off a vibe and be 100% incorrect. You know, that's fine. So, she was <laughs> yeah, wrong, and you're still rocking a ponytail Accurate. and killing it. Daniel. To be fair, though, to be fair, really quick, hit it, hit it. and then we can move on. Yeah, to the ponytail. Go ahead. I did, I mean, I did rat tail it for a while, guys. Did you really? Did it was a humble well, beginning, though, right? Hold on, hold on, hold on. A humble beginning. You rat tailed it. I'm, a, I'm 42. Did you rat tail it at the appropriate age, or did you rat tail it like closer to our age now? We're like 20, this is like 2014. My man. 2015. My man, I, I mean, I was like you. a metalhead. I, I, I still, you. I mean, I still wear the cargo shorts, the 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 chains the, on like it? army camo on it. Oh with, yeah, with the army camo, you oh, know, yeah. the death metal t shirts. Oh, yeah, you, you, you're looking like <laughs> Dimebag Daryl. Yeah, yeah, dude. Classic. Yeah, I was Dimebagging it. So uh, <laughs> comes with the ponytails, the ter with the territory. Yeah. yeah. Oh, as soon as you put those camo like pants slash shorts on, it's just do 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 do. Do, 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 that's all you hear. <laughs> Hell yeah. It just it happens. You have no choice. Daniel, you're in yeah. Chicago now, right? That's true. I've been in Chicago since 2005. Wow. Oh, wow. Okay. What is the, um for someone that maybe has never visited Chicago, what is like the comic scene like in Chicago? Do you frequent like a, a local comic shop there? Uh, I do. I, I mean, there's, tons of comic book stores in chicago all of them amazing my personal comic book shop that i go to every week is challengers comics oh, on cool. western avenue nice. uh, right in between wicker park and logan square uh i live in albany park that's a neighborhood in chicago and i, I used to live in andersonville which had uh alley cat comics <laughs> that i could walk to actually and uh great shop great owners but you know with moving to a new neighborhood it's just easier for me to get to challengers so and people are Chicago people are gonna laugh because like Albany Park and Wicker Park are like nowhere near each other. But there's no comic book stores in Albany Park. But I am right next to the highway, which leads directly to Wicker Park. Da! So there's the story about <laughs> That's funny. Challengers being my local Yo, shop. <laughs> my man is frugal with the gas, smart with the gas Shh. money. I can respect that. I like how the <laughs> quick <laughs> words. <change. laughs> I'm more, I'm more frugal really? with like my time. I like, yes, I don't want to like, cause driving to. 
Andersonville, like in rush hour. It used to be awesome. Oh man, it, you, Chicago traffic used to be like really solid, not too bad. And then they started doing all this construction over the summer, and now it's terrible. Anyway, yep. we could talk about something. He was else. like, he's like, I got to be really frugal with my time, right, <laughs> <Yeah>. guys? <laughs> You know, I do have a life, right? Are Are you able to go into a, a comic shop like in peace, or or like do you do you go and it is almost guaranteed that at least one person will recognize you? I, I can imagine like you're probably That's going yeah. like you know you got a secret entrance or something. You know, they close the shop down. Oh for you. no, no, okay, no, no, no. I mean, maybe so. I might get maybe I might get recognized, but it's pr- actually pretty rare. Hmm. That for me to get recognized in like a comic book store because nobody's nobody's expecting me to drop by, you know. Yeah. Look, so, he's just and every once in a while there'll be somebody be like, "Holy shit, <laughs> is that Daniel Ward Johnson?" <laughs> most but of that's time. like one out of five comic book stores I visit. It's okay. like most of the one time of he's holding this book, staring into the middle distance. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I make believe the it or not, I love. don't. I don't hang out. I Dude, believe it. Sure. Or not, I don't hang out next to the section with all my books next to You're it. Like, <clears throat> I just peer and be. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> You're like, oh. well. You're like Wonder Woman. That is really good comic book. What? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like to get conversations. I really like Murder Falcon. Yeah. All right, Daniel. Do you? Uh, you know what's really great? To starting conversations is when I drop my kid off to school and I have to hang around until the teacher comes out to mm-hmm. take all the kindergartners to sure. class. And inevitably. I'm talking to like other parents who bring their kids to school who have like real jobs. There you go. You know, we start talking about our jobs, and then I start talking about my job, and it's like I've grown this like second head. That's like, and then I make comic books and I pay my mortgage with them. <laughs> that's it's like, well, what do you do? Well, I like to shape the cosmos and the the mythos around the humans, the human condition, and just basically put that on paper. And God, by golly, I do the best I can. You know, I do the best I can to trap the human experience with words, um, <laughs> sometimes with pictures. I, I, guys, I really don't like going into it. I, but I'm a bit of a poet, you know. Just uh, oh, hey, there's my kid. Gotta go. I just, I'd be like, I, I, I can't go into it. I can't go into it. It's top secret. Signed, there you go. I've signed an NDA. Hey, that's, that's, it. It. Yeah. that's it. Look, I, I got this beard because I'm special forces. Yeah. That's pretty much what it is, guys. <laughs> He's like, oh, is that your daughter? I'm actually going to draw her in a comic book getting killed. What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> so I kid, I kid. All right. All right. All right Daniel, all right. we like to start off all of our uh, uh, interviews with, with this question here just to get an idea of your origin story because much like comic books, sometimes the best stories are, you know, a start of an origin story, man. Uh, or all great superheroes have a great origin story. In your case, I want to sure. hear what it was your first conscious ex- or. What was your first conscious memory of comic books? And, and does that memory differ from maybe the one comic or exact moment that turned you into a lifelong fan? Uh, probably Sunday strips of some sort uh, was like my first actual experience with comics. Hmm. Uh, my ma- my grandma, my grandmother, my grandfather had an old like collection of the old Batman comics, like the first... Batman comics. Oh, sure. Um, like, it was like a big, thick hardcover, you know? And uh, so probably some of the old Batman comics, but then also, like, Calvin and Hobbes, uh, oh. whatever was in the library is probably a tie between, mm-hmm. like, Sunday, co- or, like, daily strips, like, in the newspaper, including, like, Calvin and Hobbes, then... Probably Tintin as well, because that's those are the only comics that were in the library when I first like got into comics in the library. Mm-hmm. Uh, but those weren't. I guess Calvin and Hobbes definitely started me on my journey, so we'll just go with that. We'll go with Calvin and Hobbes. Uh, I I got to tell you, man, I'm real big Bill Watterson fan, and we that's awesome. We did a, a artist spotlight on him uh, a while, a little bit, a little bit back, a few months back. Yeah, and uh, he's he's. Man, he's the goat as far as I'm concerned. That's kind of my first experience with comic books as well. Like I was talking with somebody and I was like, they asked me a question about like, well, what do you think these stories should be serialized or should they be sold as like complete works? I was like, that's an interesting question. Um, I get, and my answer was, I guess it depends on what you're talking about. If it's like strips, it could go either way because that completed, oh my God, that chef's kiss completed Bill Watterson's hardcover 
collection is so so sorry deep. that's not sorry i guess this this symbol isn't allowed anymore my bad it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's, thumbs up. it's it's so damn good man like yeah. i i was I, I think it was i talking to you it was like it's the only place you'll see a tyrannosaurus rex piloting an f-15 you know and he, yeah, dude. and you see it in, every sunday in the funnies you know like he he i don't think he gets enough credit for going outside of influence regarding just the funnies right like you would look at and you'd be like damn like people just second guess bill watterson like oh you mean the little boy peeing on insert logo here and i'm like nah, he didn't give permission for that and there's more to him and come on give it a shot like i also feel like he's not quite in the zeitgeist in the way that you know traditional fame is kind of you know it, when we talk about that when we talk about art and artists like he just did never was in the public spotlight mm -hmm. he bowed out before things got too crazy like when the going was amazing it wasn't good the going was not good the going was amazing and he was like i'm done yeah um that takes a lot of uh i think the word i'm looking for is like integrity integrity yes yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah yeah chutzpah for sure hmm I've, yeah, uh, dude. Yeah, it just the and I, I I also really respect that too. Would you do you see yourself kind of living that sort of life, like taking the Bill Watterson sort approach, of Bill Watterson approach it? to it, and just being bye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, dude, after we're, we're like no no you, after, after you, this after, no no here's the funny part. <laughs> if we were like this, we got it. Yeah, that'd be it. We got it. You know the greatest Daniel Warren Johnson nailed uh, it, guys. interview nailed it, and it respects your time. I find myself well, you know, you've and you had this hard, this hard time. I am becoming more and more of a recluse uh, when it comes to like talking and doing interviews and doing shows, even sure. just because I have a family, I have two kids and a wife, oh. and, uh, a busy life. But you know, um, I don't think I could ever really fully go into the woods because I just am too <laughs> outgoing, and I really do love connecting with people. So. Um, I think uh, that's not my style. I, hopefully, uh, the integrity part is my style, but the recluse part hmm. is not my style. To, to add to that, could you see yourself doing, let's say, like, you know, you reach the top, you decide to, like, gracefully bow out and pursue other, you know, uh, I guess, artistic callings. Like, could you could you see yourself doing maybe, like, what, what Bill Watterson did, where he really got into, like, watercolor and, and doing other art things that he found, you know, didn't have time for while he was doing Calvin and Hobbes. Like, His I brother's guess, albums. <laughs> yeah. That's fucking great. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's a great story. So I, I guess my question really boils down to, if you weren't drawing comics on a consistent basis, what else would you want to dedicate time to doing? Probably, um, I really love plein air painting. Hmm. Like, so uh, going out and making art that's like, uh, well, it may hear while I travel. So I have a travel sketchbook for every place that I've visited in the past. Oh, cool. Since like 20, 2017. That's cool. Uh, I visited Ireland in 2017. I have a sketchbook for that. I have two sketchbooks for both times that I went to Italy, 2019 and 2023. Um, I have a sketchbook when I went to Japan. So... Usually I'm on the move too much with either my family or spending time with a significant other, with my wife that comes with me on these trips. But hmm. if I had a perfect world, it would be sitting down and being able to like watercolor, gouache, like a scene that I see while I'm out and about somewhere different. Um, and I did that a little bit during the pandemic. I did some uh, like plein air paintings of like houses around my neighborhood when things are really getting crazy in like April and May sure. 2020. So I, I see myself doing that. And I, I would hope that, you know, the comic book creative nature, especially doing my own thing, writing and drawing and making my own worlds, my own stories that will translate, that would translate to other mediums of creative. I don't know. I'm thinking of like video games right now, but <laughs> it could be television or movies or what have you. I have worked a, a little bit, in other realms, I worked on that Rebel Moon movie that Zack Snyder's doing. Really? Oh, did not know that. No, I didn't do it. I didn't do a ton of stuff, but uh, I did like a few, like, inspiration storyboards. I think they're kind of called. That's pretty cool, man. So, what was that like? Yeah, it was really fun. I got oh, dude, I 
I got who feel no sorry Ugh. uh uh who did this sorry one sec I've got to get the story right in my head Jim Lee name dropped me oh wow I guess so because uh I think he knows Zack Snyder quite well not surprising <clears throat> and. <laughs> And uh, I think they were – this is what was relayed to me by Zach's assistant. <laughs> Zach's assistant emails me and is like, Zach Snyder was talking with Jim Lee, and Jim Lee suggested that you would be an amazing addition to this, you know, creative team that we're putting together for Rebel Moon. Is this something that you'd be interested in? I'm like, yeah, sure. This sounds like a lot of fun. And then I got to talk to Zach a few times over Zoom, which was super cool. Uh, and he's like, yeah, Jim Lee was singing your praises. And I was, he's just like, here's what I'm vibing. And uh, they sent me the script, and um, Zach had specific scenes that he just kind of wanted me to riff on. Mm. So he's like, just do what you want. And then he hung up, basically. Wow, <laughs> uh, okay. And I was like, so do you like want like traditional storyboards? Do you like want like I said, a comic book do page? whatever you want. He's basically like, yeah, dude, you want to make a painting, make a painting. If you want to do one big illustration, make one big illustration. He's like, I just want to see what you come up with and where your mind is when you get when you see these words. And, uh, you know, I may riff on it. I may not. I may use it. I may not. But, like, I'm looking for other creatives to get inspired to inspire me. And, uh, uh, or that's how he put it. Okay. Super cool. So I just basically did more. I did. I was a little, I don't know. I was a little more, I did a little more traditional storytelling. I kind of treated the scene like a comic book page, but every panel was like a wide screen shot. Cool. Okay. Um, it was really fun. Do you mind if so, I ask a personal question on, on, just on that topic really quick? Do, do you get paid for your time? Like, you know, the, I'm sure that oh, it took, oh yeah. okay, got it, got it. I, I wasn't sure if that was like a, if whatever I use, I might pay and, and vice versa. But so, so it was worth your, like the time to take in, uh, it was oh. worth the investment of time. Yeah, I mean, I'm not retiring, but like it was great. <laughs> like you know, it, I mean, it it paid well, and uh, it was fun because I had to get a uh, a union exem exemption for working on the movie. Ah. Sure, uh, I had to like be like an honorary union member just for like the, my time on Rebel Moon. Oh, oh wow, cool. interesting. Uh, that was fun because uh, it's just this like paperwork that makes no sense, and they're like, "Sign here." I'm like, "Okay." Yeah. <laughs> and then this is the best part. Did it. They sent me a crew jacket. Okay. Oh, okay. What? Oh, dude. That's, that's pretty so rad. Cool. You got the swag. Dude, I got the swag. I got, like, it wasn't handwritten or anything, but it was, like, a little note from, like, Zack Snyder thanking the team for being on the movie. I'm like, I drew pictures. I shouldn't get this, but I'm, I'm so happy. That's so cool. You're like, it smells it's like, like a Carhartt. It has, oh, oh come hold on, on man. I'll grab it for you guys. Here we go. Here we go. He's like, smells like success. <laughs> 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 It smells, this is, this it is smells funny, like dude. the Snyder You know, it's funny. He was talking like, he's like, guys, I got work to do. And we're like, <laughs> yeah, you we'll do see have about work to that, do. buddy. You got work to do. We'll see about that. I'm uh, I'm trying to look at his uh, his studio. You know, I want to know what's in that glass case. And I'm like, in, like, oh, I what's back there? What's in that case? case? Yeah, exactly. I like the... It's glowing, too. It's calling me. The Jackson guitar, man. That's like the, the premier guitar for... Heavy metal guitarist, man. Ooh. Shredders from the 80s. Little filibuster right here. Just, okay, I'm see. telling you, man. Yeah. And I see he's got a, looks like a head, maybe <laughs> a cabinet. He's going to listen back to this like, like He's weirdos? like, what a bunch of freaks, dude. <laughs> yeah. Stop looking at my crap. <laughs> he's going to be like, honey. So weird. We need to vet these people a little he better. Just, what if he just walked accept? away? He just left. He just never came back. <laughs> That'd be the most gangster oh, move. Oh, back, here he back. goes. Here he goes. Sorry. Oh, and my, uh, <laughs> all good. Rachel Ooh. moved all the jackets. All the jackets. All so there's them. more where that came from. Oh, oh come that is on. stupid clean. Come on. All right. It's uh it's it's like mirrored, but it says Rebel Moon oh, and nice. there's like a wolf on it. Oh yeah, my it's man. Zero. It's got like patches for our audio listeners, he's got patches on both uh, uh yeah. sleeves. A nice like army green color it, too. It looks like the kind of jacket that Batu would wear in Ghost in the Shell. <laughs> It's fucking cool. A1. It's A1 fucking comparison. cool. You got that. Sick. It is. That's badass. It's a bucket list thing for me to have a crew jacket. That's too. sick. That's sick. So awesome. let me like ask. It was literally on my bucket list before this happened. Oh, God. Don't say that. <laughs> so I was going to ask, when you write a story, um, how hard is it to balance the, the melodrama with the genuinely warm 
moments mm-hmm. that you put in there. Because honestly, man, I think I think for the record, you nail it. But as a writer and being an artist and putting pictures and imagery to your words, that also counts as writing because you are speaking an, mm-hmm. of a, a different language. But sure. <laughs> How do you balance it, man? Like, because there's got to be parts you're like, mm, am I going too far? Is this going to overshadow the the more warmer sort of heart stringy elements, or is it going to be like, how do I balance that? How do you do it, dude? Are you talking about like how do I how do I balance like a meaningful moment between characters with like Wonder Woman tearing out Superman's spine <laughs> and using it as a whip? <laughs> so. <clears throat> Okay. For like a better term. I mean, that's that's <laughs> that that works for sure. Yeah, but I the way I like to sell your work to people who have never read a sure. comic before, um, to include my parents, by the way, today, because I was like, I'm talking to uh, Daniel Warren Johnson. I like I like his work, and Heck here's yeah. a couple of his books. And my Give mom, me that parent money. I'm telling you, man, I'm trying to get you there. And uh, they were like, Oh, what does he do? You know? And it's like, Well, mom, because <laughs> she's kind of like where I get all my interest from as far as, you know, science fiction and music and whatnot. And I was like, mom, take everything we like and like throw it at a wall and then take heartstrings and weave a center line all the way through it. And by the end, you will have the total experience regarding hmm. entertainment. And she was kind of like, that sounds nice. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, well, I mean, it's a, it's a lot, it's it's cooler than that, mom, and yeah, it's nice, you know. But that's what I'm, that's that's more or less what I'm talking about, man. You seem to just effortless, effortlessly take like like you said, like oh, well, someone's gonna get their spine ripped out, but at the same time, by the end of the book, you know, the eyes might be welling up, man. You know, I'm just, I was like, what do you think? Yeah, answer that, and yeah, I'll yeah, chime in on that. Yeah. Well, um. Thank you for the compliment. That's very kind. It's genuine. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, I think uh, I feel like genre fiction can be a little more escapist than it can be like uh, uh, life-changing, mm. if that's just the way that I can say it. Mm-hmm. You know? uh, whereas like the movies, I'm thinking about movies that have like, the story where the stories have like actively like really kind of changed who I am as a person and made me think about the world differently. They're not necessarily genre movies, you know. They're they're other movies, you know. Like um, I guess you could call Children of Men a uh, God damn that movie's so good. It, it's my favorite movie of all time. That that uh, camera shot from inside the car. I know everybody talks about it, but it's <laughs> worth talking about. It's really so good. good. I think that. Um, I'm trying to take uh, things that I feel very passionate about in like my own life and you know personally or whatever, and I'm really trying to mix that into the sauce with um, things like chain, like like pulling out uh, spine whips and uh, laser blasts and horse faced dudes. Um, you know. I'm trying to kind of use genre fiction and comics as like a it's like a sneaky vessel into like talking about things that hopefully people can connect with. Um, but I'm also not trying to be like super calculated with it either. I, mean, I right. really do love drawing st- like cool stuff. And like it shows fun stuff. Stuff sure. that like Yeah, stuff that's like oh my god. Right. right. Yeah, exactly. Like um, there are moments in Murder Falcon where I'm like yeah, literally, like, throwing up the Ronnie James Dio, you know, Maloik salute. And there are moments where, like, you have couched some pretty serious life lessons within oh, yeah. the words of these these characters that are, you know, fitting in boxes in two dimensions, man. Like, I I think, uh, do you, is there, there's obviously a personal attachment to all of this. Yeah, I, I think... Um there are things that I'm passionate about that kind of come from those different, like kind of provide that kind of, uh, excitement and badassness, if you want to call it that, that I just, that have to be in the book. Otherwise they're either not fun to draw or they're just a little too boring, or maybe the, the theme has just been said too many times the same way. I'm looking for like a new spin on something that I feel to be true. So 
a lot of times heavy metal or pro wrestling or, you know, science fiction is like a thing that I'm passionate about that I feel is really fun and exciting. And if not necessarily new, more avenues open to me as a person to kind of be able to translate it in my own way that I feel can be accessible and also like really exciting combined with that like hey this is like the story is like about something at least a little bit real um and I don't know I just it's 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 a it's a hard question to answer because it's so I feel so you know when I make stuff it's like I either make something or I'm thinking about making something and it doesn't work um and then I just like move through the avenues of self-doubt until I find something that works yeah, beautiful um beautiful that's you you sound like an artist sir <laughs> speaking of, uh, of which daniel do you have a, a like a, a preference between penciling or, or writing or doing a, any other job when it comes to, to to making comic books like do you have a do you have a preference yeah it's fair to ask at this point like do you consider yourself yeah. more of a pencil ink guy or a writer you know like where do you stand honestly they don't at this point in my career, I, I, there's not much difference between the two. They, uh, between like the art and the writing, I find myself, you know, I find myself having an easier time drawing because it's so second nature to me, mm. especially at this point. Um, I can write a page that's like a sentence long, and I just know exactly what it has to be, and I could just turn it out, you know, just make it happen. Um, with no problem at all, uh, not no problem at all, but like, you know, I know I can execute, like I write something like amazing space station scene and I'll just blow it out. You water. know what that I'm looks that like. I'm that confident. Yeah. I know what that looks like. Yeah. Um, it, you know, that's not including like the man hours and stuff, but I just like, I have it in my head. You just put the train on the track, put the coal in and it's going to go. Huh. Um, that's kind of how the art is for me at this point. And I'm still trying to push myself in that regard, but even then, pushing myself art-wise is still so much easier than sitting down at a blank document and trying to come up with hmm. something that works. Uh, I find that to be the hardest part of the process, and refining it down to something that I feel works as a script. And I do scripts on all of my stuff before I draw them. Um, I don't necessarily write the whole series or anything like that, but like the goal is always to have like one or two issues under my belt before i start drawing anything okay to make sure i'm on the right path so that's what i did with do a power bomb oh wow um and uh yeah so that's kind of how i that's how i approach things and i find that the script process really weeds out stuff that does not work before i waste my time drawing it hmm. you know it's um, uh, you were trying to get me to redo a power bomb for a little Dude. bit because he knows it was it, Daniel. It's like you custom made it for Cesar. Uh, so <laughs> like, I, I, yeah, <laughs> I had gotten into. I had never watched wrestling when I grew up. Like growing up, I never watched wrestling. Okay. I never. I had friends that were into it. Um, and around COVID, uh, around that time period, I just started watching wrestling. And like just watching yeah. WWE, I actually just watched Payback uh, to today this morning. <laughs> um, I was, that happened in Chicago too. I know, man. <laughs> I know. I was like, uh, I was, so anyway. But when my daughter was born, like eighteen months ago, uh, I would turn the TV on, and you know, I've got now I've got this little toddler who watches wrestling with me, and uh, Botter's like, hey, dude. Have you read Have you read Do a Powerbomb yet? Have you read Do a Powerbomb? Do you yet? love your daughter? Have you <laughs> Do you love your daughter? And you love wrestling? And I was like I was like, "Oh no, no, I haven't. I haven't." And he's like, "Dude, what are you waiting for?" And you know, I read it and I was just kind of like <laughs> I it's true like I felt like you 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 had made a book for me, man. Like I'm like and I'm not the only one, I'm sure. I'm not the only dad who's read Like I mean, as a dad, do you feel like your perspective has changed like as a writer? Like do you write differently? Do you have like ideas in your head now that you see the world a little bit differently? Is that a I do. I, I'm having trouble writing as a non, not a parent. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I feel like I can't help but like write the same version of the Lion King over and over. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
That's funny. I don't know. It's like such a big part of me now. You know, I, I, uh, it's a, such a huge part of my identity. It's my regular life, and it's the thing that I'm focused on. I'm thinking about um, a lot. So it, I think it has a tendency to just kind of spill over into my work. Um, you know, Wonder Woman came out. The the kind of concept of the story, that structure of the story, came out when. Um, you know, my <laughs> my uncle, I was talking to my uncle, Uncle Blood, who I named after, I, I, I named oh, yeah. him in the uh, Do a Powerbomb series. Yeah, oh. That's taken from my actual Uncle Blood, who cut himself one family reunion in his, on his shin, and it just would not stop bleeding. And from then on, all of his siblings and cousins and nephews <laughs> See, and guys, called him Uncle Blood. This is why you listen to the short box. You get the nitty gritty about these stories. <laughs> yeah. I swear to God, sometimes your own family be the biggest assholes in your you know life, right? I mean? They be the ops. They the enemy. That's funny, so. Well, you know, it's kind of a cool nickname, but um, it is. he was always super cool, and he was he's, he's a great guy. But um, he we were talking, because he has four kids, and he's obviously older than me, and his kids are now uh, in either in college or past it. And uh, he's, we were talking about, like, getting his daughter a new car because it was safer like as like before she went off to college and i was like that's cool that's cool but like at what point do you have to be like you know at what point can you like not worry like or not Uh not worry but like at what point what point do you have to let go Hmm. you know like and acknowledge that you know a lot of the safety stuff and like everything that happens in the world and it's all so effed up like you have to like release control i mean at some point you know like they just you can't just hyperventilate hyper focus on every little detail about your kid always forever because they're going to become an adult and things are going to happen and it just sucks and my uncle's like you can never let go you can never let go ever 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 and i'm like I, yes in like theory no you're never going to let go but in my head i'm like i just don't know i just don't know <laughs> and so uh, the, uh, that's kind of where that like initial, like, at what point do you let go? Uh, hmm. where it kind of got me started on one thinking about Wonder Woman and our responsibility to the world and to each other, blah, blah, <laughs> blah. So that's kind of how that started. So anyway, but I was a parent, you know, I, uh, Fiona had been born for about a year and a half at that point. So mm-hmm. wait, I can't remember. Yeah. Sounds like a real parent. Yeah, I was sounds like a real parent. I can't. I can't remember when I started Wonder Woman. Is the problem? Hmm. So yeah. I don't know how old she was. That's she that's the most dad thing you've said. I can I can relate. <laughs> yes, Daniel. We have so far mentioned. I'm. It sounds like pretty much all of. Uh, 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 we have pretty much mentioned all of like your big hitters. We've we've mentioned by name sure. at least Wonder Woman. We've mentioned uh, a Murder Falcon, do and a power bomb. do a power bomb. And I I was talking to C prior to us recording. And I was telling C, I was like, yo, Daniel Warren Johnson, to me, the way that comic book fans, or at least, you know, my immediate circle, and I'm going on a ledge thing. Do we say do we say your full name? Is that cool? Does that make you feel weird when we say all three names? <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, this is part of the story. I'm calling like, him Daniel, Daniel Warren, Mr. Daniel Warren Johnson. Mr. How Johnson. do you feel, Mr. Daniel? Yeah, Mr. Johnson. I don't mind, but you can you can call me Dan if you want. Look, yeah, just... Well, I was telling Cesar, I was telling Cesar that, you know, the way comic book fans talk about your bodies of work. It, it reminds mm. me of, of the way like film heads talk about Tarantino films or rap oh, heads. Yeah. Oh, I'll take that compliment all yeah. day. <laughs> He's As like, and actually, go back to calling me yeah, Mr. Daniel Warren Johnson, Mr. Johnson, Johnson please. Botter, <laughs> But yeah, so there's that, and then it also reminds me as a big hip hop head the way that we talk about someone like Jay Z's discography, where there's so many strong bodies of work that you find yourself. Yes, you appreciate every single body of work for you know a different reason, but you can't help but as a fan find yourself when you meet other fans talking like, "All right, but which one's your favorite? Do you, you know? like Dio and Rainbow <laughs> or Sabbath <laughs> or just Solo?" Yeah. You're like, all right, do you like Blueprint more than Reasonable Doubt or the Black Album? You know what right. I'm saying? And me and C have had these debates, and, and I've had these debates with other friends of w- what might be, you know, objectively your best, or subjectively? Yeah. Personally, our favorite bodies of work. But I'm curious, if, if coming from you, if you had to make a Mount Rushmore of <laughs> all the comic book work that you've done, and you only had to choose mm. four. I know that's like, you know, asking you to choose, choose your, your kids, but... Um, I'm putting you on the spot here. If you had to make a Mount Rushmore of the best Daniel Warren Johnson 
comic books or comic books that best represent you as as an artist as a person what would make that uh what would make that list well i don't have i don't know i feel like mount rushmore would probably be the big four that the, the four latest ones do a power bomb beta ray bill wonder woman and murder falcon probably my four most recent ones but what are your personal if i have to pick yeah. one is it, if if I had to pick one, uh, do a power bomb, hands down. Hmm. Uh, like, doesn't it's not even close. I don't have to think about it. Hmm. Huh. Um, I just stuck the landing so well on that one. I don't know how I'm really gonna top <laughs> no, that. No, no pun intended. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a good spring. Yeah, yeah. That's a good springboard to another question I asked because I, I was listening to your interview with uh, David Harper on Off Panel, which was a fantastic interview. Sure. D- David Harper is great at, at what he does. And you said something yeah. about uh, you, you actually echo what you just said. You mentioned you know you felt that you nailed the landing with uh, I believe you said Murder Falcon and do a power bomb, and that got me thinking. How do you define success in comics? Like how do you measure that? Like what is your personal goal anytime <laughs> that you you put out a comic book? Hmm. Like what is success for you? Oh man, he's like I'm still trying to figure success that out. Success for me, <laughs> yeah, I think it's uh, it's a few things. It's uh it's well okay well it's i mean for me i can only speak for me i'm not speaking for anybody else sure it's making the cheddar oh my god (laughs) (laughs) look you are fitting in perfectly by the way you're doing a wonderful i think dan might be dan might be the missing third link that we need he's the the new host that was such a such a good response well i'll turn in Uh, turn in my things cheddar cheese Reminds me of what, uh, I uh, think when Peter Quill and Guardians was like well, the cheddar cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I think, dude, successful for me. It's um, being successful in comics is making something that I can like really be proud of. Honestly, I mean, because at the end of the day, when I started making comics, it was really with Space Mole, and I was just trying to make something that I felt could stand up to whatever else might be out there, and hmm. trying to do myself justice and try to figure out how to actually make all this stuff, which is no easy thing. Um, and, you know, I didn't make any money with Space Mullet at all. Hmm. Uh, I mean, until Dark Horse put it out and I made like maybe $2,000, <laughs> you know, almost nothing. Hmm. And uh, for the relative to the amount of time I put into it. But I, I, I mean, at the time I still am in a, in this kind of like, uh, you know, fatherly way i think love space mullet and i'm still proud of it but it was a success for me i believe because i really was just trying to make something that i felt special and that i put Mm. my everything into Mm. so i think that's what success looks like primarily and then honestly like at this point because comics are are my my bread and butter it's like how i make um the mortgage payments it is a little bit of cheddar you talk you know like it's uh I make decisions creatively sometimes based on what I think is going to sell and what hmm. where the market's at and how healthy it is. And that's why it was such a uh, – uh, I felt it was a big risk to do, uh, do a powerbomb because it was a wrestling book, hmm. which is not traditionally well-received in the direct market, you know, which is kind of what my playground. And, uh, yeah, so it was a bit of a leap. It was a leap. Uh and there's sometimes, you know, you feel like, hey, this project that I got right now, I'm playing the hits, you know, and I'm, I'm like kind of I'm not catering to anybody, but it's just like what I'm vibing mm-hmm. and that's what I'm going to go for. And it just happens to be kind of in that cultural, you know, uh, downriver kind of vibe, you know, sure. you throw the yeah. boat in the, in the thing and it's going to go. Yeah. And sometimes you do projects where you just kind of got to maybe swim upstream a little, uh, so do a power bomb was definitely the latter where I really felt like I had to push and like sell the fact that it's like this is gonna be special, this is gonna be different. This is not just a you know, WWE comic that like they just make just because they can. You right. know, it's like this is like my heart and soul on the hmm. paper for you to digest and have an experience with. And I'm most proud of it at the end of the day. And it, it it did do pretty well, not like amazing, but it did well enough that I could like hold my head up high and oh, yeah. put food on the table. So I feel like I got all the Oh, I you know I I got a perfect ten bowling wise, 
Um, sometimes, you know, the money thing doesn't necessarily happen. I remember Murder Falcon only sold, like, issue one only sold, like, 16,000 copies. Like, an image, it was, it was not great, you know. Uh, it was a real bummer to hear that. Hmm. But I'm so proud of Murder Falcon, you know. I feel like it's one of my best things I've ever made. You should be, dude. I, I want to play you something, all right? Uh, a couple of weeks ago. It's his demo. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, yo, my man, can you pass this along for me? <laughs> yeah, that is funny. <laughs> that is hilarious. Okay. They had a couple weeks ago, we had a uh, uh, one of your collaborators on the show, Juan Gideon. You may know him. Okay. Co-wrote uh, yep. um, uh, Jurassic League with you, did a majority of the artwork, had him on the podcast, had a fantastic conversation, and I told him that you'd be on uh, pretty soon, and I asked him to leave a question for you, and I want I want to play that for you, all right? Oh, here he, we go. he left you a question. All right. Do it up. Do yeah. it up. Hey Daniel, this is Juan. The batter asked me this earlier, so I'm gonna put you on the spot. Who would you put in your comic book Mount uh, Rushmore? Living, dead, could be artists in general. I would like to hear your your answer. All right. So his question is one that I gave him. So he's tossing it back to you. He did my job for me. If you had to make a comic book Mount Rushmore of your favorite comic artist, who would be on the Daniel Warren Johnson Mount Rushmore? of all time great comic book artists or personal favorites. It doesn't gotta be, you know, objective. Comic book Mount Rushmore. There's a lot of names that kind of flip hmm. in and out and like kind of there's some but there's some that are staples and I'll, I'll talk, go over the staples. Um Miyazaki. Oh. Uh, Miyazaki from his uh Castle of the Wind manga. Nice. Uh Nasuka is Nasuka it's not in the castle of the wind. Nausicaa yep. Valley of the Wind. Fire uh, demons! Yeah. Uh, yep. Uh, Masamune Shiro from like Appleseed and yep. Ghost in the Shell. Classic. And Domin Dominion and Orion. Some amazing titles that are completely, honestly, actually worth the uh, out of print. I, dude, I found some now. sweet deals on some Appleseed stuff. Just oh. randomly at a used bookstore, and I paid. Stuff is good. Don't be mad. Five oh. bucks each for these trades, and I was Hell like, yeah, see? "Woo!" I'm not mad. I was buying them before. I it was hear cool. you. I hear you. <laughs> you're you're way cooler than me. I was buying those before they. I would buy multiple copies at like four or five Dude. bucks a pop because I was like, "These are so good. I'm gonna gift them to friends." And then I don't know. I think maybe it was the pandemic around that time. Like, because they had been out of print for mm -hmm. a while, and they're just kind of hanging out in comic book store shelves, not yep. getting bought. And to be totally fair, the stories on all of those comics are incomprehensible. <laughs> but the oh art is God. like next yeah. level, and um, so Shiro yep. for sure. And then I got to throw up probably he's a peer, but um, James Heron. You know, Man. I wouldn't be here without James. Wow. You know, uh, I cannot recall Juan's um, Mount Rushmore exactly. I know it was a blend of like uh, manga artists and, and um, American comic artists, but James Heron was also on his yep. list as well, and I found that pretty fascinating considering, I mean, obviously James Heron's got a you know, long career. He's got a couple of years on, on Juan, and, you know, respectively. But for someone so recent, I guess yeah, modern. You, you just expect somebody to be yeah, like Will right. Eisner or, yeah. you know, something like that, you know. I think Kirby could go up Hell there yeah. for sure for me, and he would for stay sure. up He's there. the foundation, you know. He, he, Frank Miller, Frank Miller for me, like he goes up and down. Like I look, I at think for right him now, too. And I'm like, ah, oh. but then I, 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 I don't know. I love Frank Miller. I also wouldn't be here without Frank Miller. We'll put, put Frank up Miller there. up there as well, but definitely James there too. We we'll put James up because when I was teaching before I was even making comics, you know, I was reading his stuff in BPRD. Oh, yeah. And I was flipping through it, like, after my day at school, going to the comic book store, um, reading his comics and having my life changed by that art. I mean, it was just life, it's honest, it was just life changing, you know. And it, I, I read those, I read James's comics, and I was like, this guy's getting paid to draw like this in American comics? I want to do this. I want to make comics. I want to make, if, if you can draw like this. If you can draw with this much like intensity and speed lines and like I just didn't even know that that was possible, honestly. Like that people would even buy that. Um not like I was able to really emulate it, you know, but uh 
I just wouldn't be here without him. Well said. Two qu- two follow up questions before we move on. Have you read Ultra Mega by James Herring? Okay. I have read Ultra yeah. Mega. I, I figured that was a stupid question, but I just wanted to ask. That was um, no, not a stupid question. That was a pheno- That is a phenomenal comic book. Second question: You brought up really a, a cool. bunch of manga artists, and it got me thinking that you put me on to one of these out of print mangas, and I cannot, for the life of me, recall actually two of them, the name of it. And but I do know the main character is like he's got armor, he's got like a helmet, he rides a motorcycle. It's like an out of print manga. Oh, um, oh, 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 uh, Tetsuro Ueyama for uh, Metal Guardian yes, Faust. Yes, Metal Guardian Faust. And oh, then wow. uh, that same creator has got another one called uh, a Fire Boy or something, something about a boy. Lampo. Lampo the hypersonic. Boy. First of all, awesome. I want to say thank you for putting me on to those, but yeah. also. Why would you put me on this journey trying to find <laughs> any of those books? It is insane. I, I was able to find uh, Metal Guardian and Faust a couple of issues, but I cannot find the other one for the life of me. Like, I have to hire, like... So Metal Guardian Faust... The Metal Guardian Faust is the only thing of his that's been yep. translated. And it originally came out in those single issues, but then it got mm-hmm. collected. So there's a collection. Mm-hmm. It's, it's gone up in price. I think it's like you can find it for like 30, 35 bucks now. <laughs> um, Lampo, the hypersonic boy, you can buy from Japan on eBay. And I have never had a problem with getting stuff from Japan, hmm. eBay on hmm. Japan, uh, from Japan. But you can buy it on the website and it will, they'll ship it to you. And uh, that's like 150 for the four set, four, four yeah. book set. And uh, I think it's more than good that. to know. All right, so I think I, I think it's about that much. So when I'm eating nothing, oh, and he also did uh, Mitsuyoshi, which is like a samurai comic, but all the ladies are like very. You know, <laughs> uh, I don't know what you mean, Dan. I don't like, understand what you're talking about. They're like, yeah, can you, you know, give a more detail? Uh, well, like they have like. They're like you know, it's like very big boobs, like insanely big boobs, but it's not like. The big boobs from like battle ah, chasers. Oh. It's like they're like big ladies. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. It's Look, we, sexy, here we go. We've t- it's also, put your boner away. We for real have turned into Howard Stern. So, yeah. <laughs> wow, it's, that's incredible. That's incredible. So these big ladies. That's, Robin, yeah. what do you think of those big ladies, huh? Are they from Brooklyn? Is that what you think? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for the recommendation. Uh, th- yeah, the character designs are awesome. Actually, I'll show yeah. you. Right now. I mean, I want you to see what I'm talking about. Yeah, he's like, like, guys, please. So for our audio listeners, this is where you might want to jump to video on YouTube. Link in the show notes. Oh, wow. Those are some big ladies. I mean, we got some. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. There's multiple copies of this. I only have one copy so far. Dan, thank you for letting us into your home. Yeah. Come into my m- just all all of my all, my whole shelf is just uh, <laughs> ladies with uh, large boobs. Welcome to my home and welcome to my mind. Big, yeah, and after the break, we're gonna have uh, Robin. All right, this is a little NSFW, but like stuff like. Oh wow! Okay, okay. yeah, that's what, you weren't kidding. Got it. So this is yeah, it's it's pretty intense, but also it's like, you know, it's so well drawn. Yeah. <laughs> it's so well drawn. The action is so incredible. Mm. It's like. I don't know. It's just so great. This is just. I I will I will look for these. Um, yeah, you know, bet you, yeah, I bet you will. Yeah, I no, <laughs> Let me finish. I yeah, bet you will. I will look for the other manga that you mentioned, and uh, you know, I'll just accept the fact that I'll be eating uh, nothing but ramen for the next uh, month <laughs> and a half, buying Japanese imported books. But speaking about comic books that are well drawn, that have a lot of action. Uh, Dan, the previews for Transformers number one, oh, I yeah. think, were posted yesterday by Skybound. They look amazing. I think it's only gotten everyone even more hype about the upcoming comic book, October 4th, uh, Transformers number one. And I want to get to talking about Transformers number one. I think this is how we'll go ahead and wrap up the show. Talk, talk about bearing the lead, by the way. <laughs> no, dude, no, we're not bearing the lead. Not at all. Oh, whatever. Is- Everybody knows about Transformers that now. That is true. So might as well talk about well, you know, We're, we're going to tackle it a little different. You know, because what? everyone's got access to the same solicitation, the same previews. But what they don't got access to 
is a very talented. Stop. I, voice I think I know what you're gonna do. I don't like this. All right? I don't like this at all. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have Cesar. <laughs> I don't like this. I'm gonna have Cesar read the solicitation for Transformers number one. You son of a bitch. Do it, voice boy. No, I don't want. <laughs> okay, I think I know what. You, I yeah, want to hear I think it now. I know what it's you been want. it's been hyped yeah. up. Prepare now you gotta us. do it's it. It's not all right. <clears throat> all right. You need some water. Don't yeah, mess maybe up. Give me some, yeah, just a little sweet water. Yeah, man, you got some spit in this. What's going on? Ew, you drunk backwash, nasty. All right, You're let's so see. Nasty, dude. Let's see if I can do this. I, Optimus Prime, was supposed to have led the Autobots to victory. Instead, the fate of Cybertron is unknown. My allies have crash-landed, far from home alongside <laughs> my enemies, the Decepticons. As these titanic forces renew their war on Earth, one thing is immediately clear. The planet will never be the same. New alliances are struck, do, do, do. battle lines are redrawn, do, 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 do. and humanity's only hope for survival is do, do, do. I, Optimus Prime from Cybertron. Come on, let's come uh, on. Yeah. That's talent. <laughs> that ain't <dee> -dee <laughs> That's beautiful. Dee -dee All right, hey. two questions on that. There you go. There we go. I do. Now, now you have to do the the same thing with lion, though. Can you do the lion? Dude, that shit gets me so freaking hype every time I hear it on Spotify, and it comes up randomly because it's in my like song. People who ride with me in my car. What about? Oh my god. Autobot Decepticon battle. So, Mr. Cola. Yeah. Oh, dude, I was going to say, yeah, he's the guy who did the soundtrack for Rocky IV, and mm. it fucking shows. Yep. Yep. Damn. Yeah, dude, it's. Can I admit? Uh, and do you know, this is a secret Here tip. Secret Go tip. Ahead. He has a separate record that's all of the instrumentals what? of Transformers the movie that is not, that is, it's separate from. The Transformers soundtrack hmm. of the 86 oh, wow. film, where the, the soundtrack has has a few of Vince's cuts, like Autobot Deception sure. Battle, Death of Optimus Prime. I think there might be one more, and the rest are like those 80s, you know, instruments of destruction. Yeah. <laughs> that kind of vibe, you know. Uh, it's but, beautiful. He has a he has a record that you can't get on streaming, but you can buy the record like hmm. on Apple. Like yeah. Apple, uh, iTunes store. Uh, like if you buy the actual record, um, thank you. And it's great. It's total. It's, there's no singing or anything. Beautiful. It's just like that mm. kind of vibe. Like all of the background stuff that he did for the whole That's, film. It's like the actual oh score. Oh my god! That's badass. Dude, talk dirty to me, yeah, Dan. Check that this out. is this has can, been so this has been so great. Before I ask my question, can I admit? No, no, you don't get to ask that, anything though. Can I admit that I only recently watched the Transformers movie? Maybe I don't know. Five maybe in the last five years. That's fine, man. And I saw it in theaters. Uh, Ryan was having his, I think, his big fortieth birthday was to get a group of people to go watch the Transformers movie because they were re-showing it at AMC. Heck yeah, dude! When I say I might have been the most hype motherfucker were in you that like, theater, you got the touch, dude. Bam, bam, bam. I already knew that you Optimus Prime power. was going to die in the first yeah. couple of minutes, and I still was sitting in that theater like. You heard what? What? you heard Judd Nelson talking to you personally. Bro, like he was what? like, if you're gonna ride, Potter, ride in style. <laughs> <laughs> exactly uh, you're like, I will. <laughs> Sometimes I <laughs> Why run when you can fight. <laughs> yeah, what is he? You know, yeah, Potter's like mouthing the words. It's like cowards run, Megatron, <laughs> heroes stand. <laughs> okay. All right. Daniel, I guess Such for, foolish heroics. First question. Or one of my favorite lines in the whole movie. Ah, oh, my foot! <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. It's so good, dude. That's great. Dan, did you, did you, um, I know a lot of writers tend to write their own solicitations. Did you write, did you have any hand in the solicitation that, that Cesar just wrote? No, I didn't touch that. No way. No way. I don't got time for that. Even Come better. Is it. there, Skybound, Skybound does that. I only do that when I have to. Nobody likes writing hmm. solicitations. That's, That's good to know. <laughs> I had to write the solicitations for all of do a power bomb. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, you know what? I think I will use ChatGPT for something. 
Um, oh, God. Yeah, I, right. So, well, I guess, do you have anything to add that solicitation that might give the uh, our listeners a, a better insight into to what they can expect from your version of Transformers? Yeah, man. Yeah. Well, I, okay, I've said this before in other interviews, so I'm just going to say it here, too, because it's it just the best hmm. way to say, to, to kind of give people the vibe. Um, I... So I'll start with this. Like I've grown up with Transformers. I love Transformers, the TV show, the comics, the whole deal. But the thing that connected with me most was the movie. I mean, it was mm. the movie. Um, and it still does. It's still my favorite piece of Transformers lore, media, whatever you sure. want to call it, art. It holds up still to this day. I've seen it so many times. The music, the background art, the uh, the animation. Like It's a cut above the, the TV show Absolutely. in every way. It's better than all of the Michael Bay movies combined. I'm sorry. It just you got to apologize for is that. It's how man. it is. Not at all. <laughs> so, yeah. And you know what? It's like, like of course, you know, Optimus Prime dying. You know, there's real consequences, even though it comes at the request of uh, brutal capitalistic strategies. Right. You know, like, it, it's like shamelessly like shamelessly capitalist like we're here to make money <laughs> and yet somehow the purity of those characters comes right through the screen directly into my oh. eyeballs and i feel every minute of it um which is something to talk which is something which says something about the power of like well-designed things and just how special something can be visually all that to say uh I am trying to emulate the vibe of the 1986 hmm. movie. Like, I cool. really I am. Like, I'm using that as my Bible for character designs. I sent it to Mike. Mike was like, you got any ref, you know, when I talk about colors? And I just told him to watch the movie. That's funny. <laughs> wow. And he, I'm, I'm sure, which I'm sure he already did. I was like, it's basically, we're, we're going for that 86 movie vibe. We want to have fun. We want it to be meaningful. Uh, we want people to you know, celebrate and mourn in the same way and in a way that hopefully resonates even for something that just is about, you know, toys and selling Look, toys. Look, I mean, the movie made money. children cry and now you're going to make men cry. So it's going to be, <laughs> it's going to be, it's going to be good. I just want to give somebody, I want to give people something that is worth their money as always. Uh, I want to do it while being able to care for my fam. And the best way that I could do that was to just make the most bomb ass Transformers comic I could God, possibly man. do. God, man. Okay, so that sold it for like right there is the selling point because yeah. you can hear it in your voice, you know. Like it's I'm end trying. of the, end, I'm trying end real of the hard. day. It's like you know. Look, I'm going to tell you what I told everybody. I'm trying to use the model of the movie, blah blah. blah. And then he pauses and he's like, "Man, I'm just, I'm just trying to make the best, like the bomb ass, most bomb ass Transformers comic." Is. <laughs> like it's like. Well, there it is, right there. He just <laughs> yeah. won the election, folks. That's all. It's in. The votes are in. <laughs> Dan's Dan's the president. I uh, yeah. I can't show you any of the pages because they're all too spoilery. Sure. Uh, and I sent off my issue one art to my rep. Otherwise, I'd show you that. But I've got my little reference. Panel. All right. Uh, so I do this for every project. There's a Beta Ray Bill one, a Wonder <laughs> Woman one, I do a Powerbomb one. I just take a bunch of crappily printed out uh, eight and a half by eleven pieces of paper from my printer, uh, and I just will use it for uh, reference. It looks like it here's a spark. Here's Sparky from from the the, and here's a. Oh, spiky, that's cool. You know, I just print it out for myself. Uh, and I just add to it as the project goes. So it'll be like pretty thick by the time it's done. Here is a like really, you know. Oh man, wild, that's but, great. Damn. So so that's from the f issue one, and that is so something for me to have. So I'll print out my own art just because I will. I'll make creative decisions like on the page in that day on that moment and I will forget them so I'll just print out what I did hmm. to make sure I'm consistent moving forward. You brought up uh yeah. you, you brought up Mike Spicer, the colorist that you've been working with, you know, pretty pretty tight for ever since Extremity from uh, Extremity, Murder Falcon, yep. Wonder Woman, Beta Ray Bill, Do a Powerbomb and, and now Transformers. C can you speak a little bit more about 
your your uh, I, I guess friend relationship with with Mike, you know, personally and uh, professionally. Um, I had a chance to meet him at a convention here in Jacksonville a couple of months ago, and he was so okay. humble, so very nice, very soft spoken. And he had all of uh, he had Murder Falcon. He had all these books around him. And the only thing I could you know muster up to ask him was like, "What does it feel like getting some of these pages from Daniel?" And dude, the look he gave me, he was like, "Bro, it's Daniel Warren Johnson. You've seen what's in it." And he grabbed Murder Falcon <laughs> and he just flipped it to a random page. He's like, "I mean, look at it, man." Look at it. <laughs> 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 that, that was some of the funniest shit ever. Can you? I, I guess from your perspective, Heck yeah. what's it like working with Mike and 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 you know? I guess like, how have you guys? What's that relationship yeah. look like when you guys go to work? You know, like you just mentioned nonchalantly, like I you know I talk with Mike or whatever. Like, but do you guys? I, I mean, you've worked together on so many projects. Is it to the point now where we're like, all right, buddy, you ready to ride out into the sunset one more time? <laughs> You know, uh, it is a lot like that, hmm. actually. it's um, We actually never talked even on the phone or anything oh, wow. until the pandemic happened. Oh. Uh, when we were kind of, I think we had to talk about some logistical thing or something, but it we worked so well just over email communication, we just never had a reason to. How'd you, how'd you find him, Mike? You know, we've never. How, how'd you ahead. find him? I'm sorry to interrupt. How'd you find him? <clears throat> no, you're fine. When I was working on Extremity, we had a colorist in place already that had colored all of issue one which we really dug but then the deadline came and went for the colors to be turned in for issue two and it was <laughs> they just ghosted oh, wow. us you know uh i think they just had a, a lot hmm. of projects do uh. what have what have you so it got to the point where they just wouldn't answer emails so we were like okay we just have to let them go and we got to look for a different colorist uh and Mike was a suggestion to me by my friend Brian Lovell, who also works oh, in yeah, comics. Brian. And uh, he was working on some boom stuff at the time, Mike was. And uh, we reached out and we were like, hey, just here's like two pages. Just give a crack at them, see how we, how we feel. And I saw those two pages and I was like, this looks really good. Let's go for it. And uh, he recolored all of issue one. And I thought it looked fan fantastic like i thought it looked so good i was so happy i was more happy with mike's colors than the previous colorist actually um it just seemed to fit my style mm, so well are. and uh yeah i just from then on it's been like not even a not even a consideration of anybody mm. else it's always been yeah. mike always uh it's been it's an absolute pleasure to have him on projects he's so easy to work with you know <laughs> Our communication, like, at the beginning of the story, like, I sent Mike... What did I send Mike? When uh, we were working on Murder Falcon, I sent him a few screenshots of, like, Street Fighter. Cap Marvel versus Capcom, sorry. And I was like, I want it to look like this. And he's like, okay, I got you. And he killed huh. it. And that was basically the only back and forth as far as, like, vibes or, like, reference we ever had. I will usually do a quick watercolor study of, like, my own characters and the what I kind of want them to look like. And Mike will take that and run with it. Sometimes he'll make little changes. Sometimes he'll keep it the same. Um, and uh, that's about all he does. Like, oh, that's like, that's about all I do, I should say. And there have been maybe five times, this is very rare, like 99% of the time I get stuff and I'm like, this is awesome. And the only thing that I might have notes on is like, Oh, that sword's supposed to be red or whatever, right? Like storytelling stuff. Other than that, every time he kicks it out of the park, every hmm. single time he kills it. And then there's been a few times where, like, I just haven't liked the way a panel <laughs> looks. And I'm like, Mike, I don't know why I don't like this. But I can't, like, I honestly, like, I cannot place my finger on it. And he's like, I got you. And he, like, fiddles with it. I'm like, no, I like it. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Damn. I wish... Yeah, this happened maybe five times where I've even had to say, like, oh, this one I'm just not vibing with. And he's like, no problem. And he's just so good at his job. He's he's always on time. He's just, like, he gets it done. He's just amazing. Amazing. Damn. Amazing. I can only dream of what it feels like. I couldn't ask for a better – I couldn't and I could not ask for a better – person to work on to color my comics it's just so he's so it's so, it's so awesome that you have somebody 
in your corner like that that just knows exactly how to deliver the goods and never leaves you I cannot believe you, you just took my joke. And never, I can only imagine what that feels like, lets you down Daniel. <laughs> in any sort of way I say that. at all. <laughs> Oh, jeez, oh, scared that. I thought you me. knew your daughter was I thought, behind yeah, you. I, thought I was too. like, oh, he knows. Go to bed. Go to sleep. Yo, that's your future, Cesar. Yeah, that'd be so cute. It's, just, it's the way it is now, my man. <laughs> Dude, we didn't say anything because I was we, like, no, yeah. he's got dad spider yeah, he sense. Could see the, he could see his screen. I'm sure he could see. <laughs> nope, I had no sense. sense. These are noise canceling oh, headphones. Nice. Oh, my God. All right. I got, I got, I got um, maybe two more questions for you, Dan. Maybe? Um, I said maybe. That's Depending funny. on where we go, where we go. Depending on where we go. All right. Dan, yeah. in a recent interview, you were... Oh, I'm sorry, let me take it away. Oh, my God. Here we go. Right. Here comes the gotcha journalism. <laughs> Here it comes. Dan, you better watch out. Here Shut up. I Shut don't up. know what's going to happen. Shut up. I'm ready. I'm I ready. I feel like... Hit me, hit me. You have been way... Uh, you've just been real. Like, you've been very honest, and I, I really appreciate the honesty, and just you just keeping it a buck with us, right? Just keeping it hyper real. Mm. And, you, and okay. I think... That has come across in other podcasts as well. Maybe not as well as this one because, you know, it's a short box. We just Clearly, it we've nailed it better than everyone else. <laughs> but you've been very open and honest about the toll uh, that creator-owned books uh, take on you. And, and I think that's something I don't hear too much about. I hear a lot of, like, the plus side of creator-owned books, right? Like, you get to own the IPs. You get to, you know, uh, a greater return on investment. Like, all the pros that come with creator, uh, the creator-owned route. Uh, but but you've made it seem like you know it isn't everything that it's cracked up to be, and you talked about in this particular interview like just feeling burnt out from having to come up with every single idea. And I was curious, have you found like any comfort um, or, or a chance to like recharge your creative batteries while working on Transformers and having like you know established IPs and being able to like you know have some sort of oversight? Like how has it been working on? Transformers, say, versus, you know, something creator-owned. And, you know, like, has it given you enough time to plan your next move? Um, you know, so I have not been shy about this. Working on a licensed property like Transformers has, in a lot of ways, been a real challenge because I come to the table with, like, my ideas and I'm excited about them. And then Hasbro's like, mm, I don't know about that. You know, <laughs> so you have to like do this like. And to be fair, like I swing for the fences yeah. like every time. I'm like, I want to do this thing. I'm like pointing to the outfield, you know. And Hasbro's like, mm. let's go to second base. Let's try so, second base. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I have a very clear picture of what I want in my head, and I fight for it very, very hard. Um, and. I'm also dealing with realities of the fact that I do not own the Transformers. Sadly. And that, uh, you know, it is, it, <laughs> it's owned by a company that is, you know, they got their vibe. And it's important for me to be respectful of that while also trying to deliver something that I feel like I can be proud of and hold my head up high with. So, you know, overall, the positive, I would is, is it has been a positive. Overall, it has been an incredible experience. It is so much fun to draw Transformers. I'm doing my absolute best to bring everything I possibly can to the table. I think even just the preview images that have been released have show that. Um, but at the same time, because of that, you know, because of the kind of reining in of what I just have to do, just because it is a gig, it's not like a creator own thing. It's made me take that energy and start having hmm. to channel it back into my own uh, intellectual property, my own stories, because you know. I am the kind of person, for whatever reason, I need a fire lit under my butt to get things done a lot of the time. Um, you know, I I don't know what it is. I just, I, a lot of times I need uh, some sort of other force to kind of get me into gear. Maybe it means I'm a lazy person. I'm not sure. Uh, but, you know, after do a power bomb, I sat down. I was like, I'm going to write my next comic book now. And I, I didn't have time. To write anything because I, I the ideas had not just dated enough during do a power bomb um i was really tired and uh for whatever reason like i was able to crank out like three or four issues of script of do a power bomb before i finished art on bay ray bill wow um so i was like really ready to go and uh do a power bomb all creator on books you know especially an image you know you're doing it all yourself and uh you're doing marketing you're doing like 
uh, emails and you're doing podcasts and you're talking with shops and you're doing creative, uh, doing like uh, exclusive covers and you're trying to hustle, you know, you're playing the game. You're like all, like all, always going all the time. Let's go, let's go. And then when you're finished with the final issue, you're just like, <sighs> um, and there's just, I had no juice for another creator on book in me. I like would sit down to write and I just couldn't write. I just couldn't get my brain to activate. I was too tired and I kind of wanted somebody to tell me mm-hmm. what to do. You know, I kind of wanted like a job yeah. job. And, uh, it was actually just kind of perfect that Transformers came along because Transformers is that job job, you know, like that thing where it inherently requires a little bit of distance from me because I can't do it exactly the way I want. I don't think that makes it by any means like an inferior story or product or what have you. It's just a different vibe and it's a different way of working. And because I am a little bit farther removed from it, I'm able to take some of that energy and that passion like I said before, transfer it into something new that is my own that I'm really excited about. It'll be the next thing that I work cool. on, I'm pretty sure. I'm like 90% sure. Um, and, you know, I don't think I really would have been able to do it without, you know, working on something different. Mm-hmm. I, I wish I could be that guy. I think like Rick Remender's like this. Creator on, creator on, creator on, creator on, creator on, creator on. Like I really admire him for being able to just pump out idea after idea, character after character after character, continually. Bam, bam, bam. I'm not that guy. I'm just not. I never will be. I need a back and forth, I think. I need to have a kind of sway. Otherwise, I just... The ideas in my mind will not be formed well enough for me to make something that I can be really Hmm. proud of. It it really does take a lot of fermenting, you know? I'm like soy. Soy, uh, what is it? Soy sauce. It takes a long Hmm. time before I start leaking. Damn. (laughs) That was a really good answer. I appreciate the insight. That's great, dude. <laughs> no worries. And, uh, yeah. Dan, I, I think in, in closing, since we have been getting, you know, some honest and, and <clears throat> realness, I, I want to ask if we can get us a short box exclusive. And I, I would like to hear, if you can share, whatever you can share, is there, can you share any ideas that were rejected by Hasbro? Oh, wow. That That's... you pitched that were pretty, you know, you said that you were aiming for, you know, the outfields every single time. And it sounds like you would always kind of get back in the middle. But was there any one idea that you that you can share that was that was uh, shot down? It's like Unicron in a black metal band, <laughs> <laughs> just huffing and breathing heavily. You're so like Orson Welles can't deliver you're dialogue. Like, you're like Matt Black, Optimus he's like, Prime. He's like <sighs> Matt Black. I'm trying to. I'm 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 honestly trying to think of something specifically that they have said no to and now i'm like i'm having trouble some com- coming up with something on the spot uh let's see hold on hold on hold on well you know what so i can't i honestly like this is no bs answer i could answer your question but i'd be getting into spoiler territory mm, can't have that if i sure. said it because it's like you know hasbro may say you can't do that but you you can't do it that way you know you can make and then like it's kind of up to me to kind of like backdoor it and try and like figure out a way where we can all be happy and it's kind of like it's actually it's a kind of a if i'm after i get over my frustration (laughs) you know it's a nice like creative exercise and a good way to kind of like flex and train the creative muscles to kind of work on the fly and find other solutions that still work and are still you know awesome um all that to say, though, you know, I've been dancing and stuff, and I don't want to really. If I tell you something, it's going to give you the vibe, and then it'll kind of ruin the story sure. a little bit. So I'm going to hesitate, and uh, maybe you have me on in a year or so. Ooh, I'll tell okay. you, tell you more right. about it. I like it. I was. I mean, I was going to shamelessly just Gosh, ask for us to come back for a part. First time ever. That, that's that's the short box exclusive. We got it recorded. We got it recorded. He said it. the he short said box it. exclusive is a guest asking to come back willingly. You know. <laughs> All right. Well. Oh, oh. You know what? I'll, I won't tell you what they tell me not to do story wise, but I will tell you something they're very concerned about. Hasbro is very concerned that the hands look too human. My robot hands look too human, so I keep having to adjust the hands, especially on the covers. Oh, wow. That's great. That's cool. So yeah. Can you make the hands so now, so like, look? less rounded <laughs> they are robots in disguise after all daniel thank you thank you daniel 
I just like draw the Transformers like they were in the Marvel comics, you know, which like the little mm. rings. You got and, the booty and ski. You know, this is yeah. how I, I yeah, roll. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, I don't like do little. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so every once in a while, Mike Spicer, another a champ, you know, Hasbro will be like, "Hey, these are looking a little too human." And then Mike's like, "I'll go in and add some more white highlights <laughs> to make it really look That's metal." Great about teamwork. <laughs> All right. How about we give something to to the listeners, and, and we'll call it a day here. Dan, what practical okay. piece of advice would you give to an aspiring comic creator that's listening right now, based on something you wish someone would have told you as you were breaking in the industry? It's like, don't grow a ponytail. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, a T square. This is a T square that's tiny. It's a tiny T square. Mm-hmm. It is 11, no, sorry, it's 12 inches long, and it hooks on to paper rather than, like, it, like, hooks on to paper rather than the side of your table. I used to use the big T-squares that will hook onto the side of the table. Never again. Game changer like that? just takes too long. Good Lord. Yeah, I got my iPad here, you know, like, so here, there, I'm locked in. Get out of here. Look at that. It's like... Perfectly straight. Whoa. This I'm I'm having trouble having it click, but perfectly straight. You, are you using Procreate? Um <laughs> I was using Procreate, yes. Uh but I it's I saw hmm. like sometimes when I pencil for covers and stuff or if I really need to get something hmm. done. Um here I'll use this toy box, this transformer. My dog. Box, you know. Boom. Okay, I got I gotta ask. Does Hasbro Boom. send you stuff? I can slide it up down. <laughs> Do they do they send you like toys and stuff? Like if you idea. ask for reference, we're working on getting a free hiss tank. This is the goal. <laughs> this is the goal. I was like, I'm making a bomb ass Transformers comic for you. Can you send me? Oh a hiss my tank? god! There we go. There we go. Actually, this poor guy. His name's Michael. He's awesome. Uh, he is the contact guy for the comics and uh, side of things for Hasbro. Uh, he puts up with my BS. Thank you, Michael. Uh, but the first thing I did when I met him, I was like, "Hi, nice to meet you. What's a guy got to do to get a his tank around here?" <laughs> and he's like, "We'll see what we can do." We'll see yeah, what he we just can looks do. at you. He's like, "Retreat." <laughs> yeah, that is awesome. He's a good sport. That's awesome. It's like, uh, yeah, Dan, we we have some issues. Oh yeah, what's going on? Well. So far, you've asked for the premier wheelie figure, the premier RC figure. <laughs> you've asked for Starscream, Soundwave. Uh, I, 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 I don't understand. I thought you already had reference for this. Yeah, I do. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. <laughs> well, w- then why do you need all three forms of Optimus Prime, the War for Cybertron, the movies yeah you see on my contract here uh, there's <laughs> yeah, this, there's just a, a, a writer there's just a, a, a pc thing uh, well, if you if you reference this that means personal collection yeah it's the For most the rock and PC. roll thing you have a transformers writer instead of like brown <laughs> m&ms it's like dude that's so kind of bad at I haven't I haven't done that. I haven't done that, but I am now for the duration of my working on Transformers, I am writing off every single Transformers. Come on, man. We love a tech loophole smart man. That Thank is you. that might be federal government. That might be but for some reason that gave Damn me a, fi- a boner. That gave me a weird financial boner. Yeah. I'm over here like a responsibility <laughs> boner. Yeah, look at Come this. Come on, man. Look at these oh, tax write off heads. Oh my gosh. Looks like my studio. Yeah, he's got a lot. Man, those are some I see Starscream. Figures. I see Optimus. Yo, come on. There we go. We love a good Shock Shockwave right is here. my favorite, dude. The poor that poor Man. bastard got left behind. <laughs> He's just like, guess I'll hold the fort <laughs> down, <laughs> you shitheads. <laughs> He's like there millions of years. Dan, we. Oh, my food's my oh. food's almost here. I'm out. All right, I'm out. Bro. I'm out. Dan, this has been fantastic. We will definitely take you up on a uh, on a part two. You're welcome anytime. Yeah. Come we're back have, anytime, man. We're gonna have links to your socials, to your website, as well as the the, the preview of, of Transformers number one that'll be in shop October fourth. But do you have anything else you wanna you wanna plug or yeah. say to the listeners before you leave? Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Getting there subscribers on YouTube is insane. It's difficult as hell. So hard. Yeah. I promised my viewers on my live stream i go live every friday friday with d-dubs it's called it's really fun <laughs> chill i just draw just you just kind of hang out i uh there's no super chats 
There's no, I don't answer a ton of questions. I just kind of do what I'm working on that day and people hang out. Um, that's every Friday around five o'clock central time. But yeah, I've promised people on the live stream, like I'll never ask people to subscribe, but I'm not on my YouTube channel right now. So subscribe yeah. to me. Just look up my name on YouTube. It. You'll find me. Uh, thank you in advance. Hell yeah. It's going to be worth your well, time. Super chill. I don't fall for this, uh, this, uh, what is it? The, uh. The algorithm mm. BS ah, can't stand uh, that, you know. There's no smash this like button, whatever. You're not I like, just, uh, it's ten like, ways come. the industry failed me. Click to see what happened. <laughs> and it's just like, yo, <laughs> man, switch. <laughs> or like just a sad, a picture of me being sad, like, comics is over. Right. No, <laughs> none of that. We're not doing that. There's no clickbait. There's no bull S. Sorry, I'm trying not to swear. There's no, there's no, there's no BS. Look, you just come, you watch me draw. Any man. Up. The Any man with a John Carpenter international thing poster <laughs> shirt on can be trusted. Okay, yeah. I mean that sincerely. Big trustworthy vibes. Oh, this is actually the it's the Korean uh, VHS box um, art. Come on, man! I can. It's Korean. I can. I can and I'm ordering Korean food. Wow. Kismet. Wow. Kismet. Wow. Look, this, is, this, this is has been fantastic, Dan. You enjoy your enjoy. dinner. Well earned. Well earned. Well dinner. earned dinner. You and, survived. Yeah, and we'll, we'll be picking up Transformers 1, and, and we Absolutely. look forward to having you back on the show soon, man. Yeah, Thank man. you so much, brother. Real good talking with you, man.